In this video tutorial, we'll be discussing a very common skin condition that afflicts many of us at some time during our lives, and that is seborrheic dermatitis. We hope you find this tutorial informative. Dermatitis means simply inflammation of the skin. Seborrheic describes the parts of the body that are affected by this rash. The seborrheic areas imply parts of the skin that are densely populated with sebaceous glands. And those areas include essentially the scalp, face, and ears, and sometimes the breastbone and groin area as well. Seborrheic dermatitis is characterized by patches of redness, scaling, and flaking in these areas that often is quite itchy. People don't like it for that reason, plus it's flaky and you can get flakes on your clothing and nobody likes to have dandruff. About 3 to 5 percent of the population at any given time has seborrheic dermatitis, and that number may reach as high as 10 to 20 percent if you count the mildest manifestation of seborrheic dermatitis, which is dandruff. When little babies have seborrheic dermatitis, it's often referred to as cradle cap. The, both sexes are equally affected by this condition. It most commonly starts after adolescence and kind of peaks in the 30s to 40s, and then actually kind of wanes off after that. In fact, most people who still have seborrheic dermatitis into the later decades of life, it's usually much milder, less intense. This is a condition which is a nuisance. It does not affect your well-being or your health. It's just another thing to have to take care of. Like so many conditions that affect human beings, you can manage this, you can control it, you can treat it, but you can't cure it. And therefore, treatment is ongoing or at least intermittent. Uh, the cause, is, like so many conditions, is unknown, but it's thought to be associated with an immune intolerance to a yeast, a type of yeast that lives on our skin normally in these areas, in the Malassezia or Pterosporum family. And that's how part of the treatments work is by diminishing the numbers of these organisms. By and large, like I already mentioned, it's a very chronic condition. It does wax and wane, comes and goes. It's also generally worse in the winter months or the colder parts of the year. If you have a, a child younger than adolescence and, this, and the rash or scaling involves a scalp, one always has to be suspicious of an infection with ringworm or a fungus, which is termed tinea capitis. But seborrheic dermatitis can also affect children, as with these two illustrations. On the left, you see a child that has uh, tinea capitis, or ringworm infection of the scalp, and on the right is a child with facial seborrheic dermatitis. Treatment, again, is intermittent or continuous. In order to make it as convenient as possible, for the scalp we usually use a combination of medicated shampoos, some of which are available over the counter and some by prescription, as well as a topical medicine that is applied on an as-needed basis. We would generally suggest using the medicated shampoos two or three times per week, whether symptoms are present or not, for prevention, and again the topical medicines on an as-needed basis. For the scalp, most of the medications are designed not to mess up the hair, so there are liquids or gels or foams. For the face and ears, creams or lotions are used, but medicated washes are also helpful. As far as over-the-counter shampoos available, there are many brands available, as you can see by this illustration. They contain different ingredients, primarily salicylic acid, tars, sulfur medications, and also a topical anti-yeast medicine called ketoconazole. There are some also some over-the-counter topical creams that can be tried for face and ear involvement, and these contain uh, very mild hydrocortisone or tar or sometimes salicylic acid or zinc pyrithione. If these are not effective, a visit to your doctor will provide stronger medicine that may be more effective for you.